Chances are, if you have listened to a rap or pop station today, you have heard some Afrobeat songs. The genre exported from Africa is now burning up the charts, but some of the songs now popular came out months or even years ago. ABC's Faith Abube takes a closer look at how social media is making the old new, exposing Americans to music that people in other countries have been enjoying for quite some time. Little Love or Love and Want to Teat becoming a soundtrack for millions of TikTokers and Instagrammers. The words a mix of Pigeon English and Evo. Finding glory on radio stations across America two years after Nigerian artist CK first released it. Social media was the place where lots of people from different parts of the world discovered this song. On YouTube, I see lots of comments saying, I've been searching for this song for three months, but I didn't know the name. I just found it, thank God. Two remixes have remained on the global Shazam chart for weeks now. CK's decision to incorporate his native tongue, resonating with Americans now suddenly listening to hits in Spanish, Korean and Igbo. I was literally just being authentic and true to myself and everyone connected with that in the original language. Afro beats, an African medley of R&B, pop and hip hop, being pumped out of mega cities like Lagos has had millions of fans for years, but now it's becoming globally recognized. Wizkid, Anjali Kijo, Burna Boy and Femi Kuti among this year's Grammy nominees. Femi, the eldest son of the late Fela Kuti the first major African artist to cross over. He's known as the godfather of Afrobeat. Luz Diaz, an African soul and funk originating in the 1960s. Uh, all the problems, all the things we think. His Yoruba vocal style and powerful performances, the theme music for political activism and revolution during a turbulent time. Some have decided that Afrobeat without an S, a singular, is designated to Fela in that generation that this new sound is called Afrobeats. The people who argue that that differentiation do pay homage to, you know, the previous sound and the influence of the sound. This generation's interpretation of the sound varies from the different perspectives within the African diaspora. Joanna, jo, jo, Joanna. In 2018, Ivorian Brit singer and DJ Afrobeat popularized the Afrowave genre in London after his hit song Joanna, also known as Drogba. The main aim for Afrowave is to connect Africans, African Americans, the Caribbeans, everyone to their roots, so all the diaspora, to connect them together. The current global smash hit Essence helping bring even more fans, elevating artists Wizkid and Tamps. Temps known for her own hits like Damages. Is there something specifically about Afrobeats that you think is resonating with people? I think African music in general is very spiritual. It makes you feel, it makes you want to do something when you listen to any type of African music, whether it's Afrobeat, house, R&B or Afro soul. Whatever you're listening to, African music is very touching to the soul and to the body. It just makes you want to move and do something. And I can't say what that ingredient is. I just think it's in the blood, maybe. Essence became so popular that when Justin Bieber showed up on a remix, many in the diaspora were outraged, playing off the hook, saying the song did not need no other body. But Western stars are increasingly tapping into Afrobeat's popularity. Beyonce's visual album, Black is King, featured African artists across the continent. I can't talk for too long, got too much go to try on. Jealousy. Her songs, like Don't Jealous Me, featured in Black is King, combines the artistry from Afropop, Benku, reggae, and hip hop musicians. People in the diaspora were able to connect to these visuals and the sound and knowing where it's from and doing more research after the Black is King project because, you know, we had a collective voice of creatives who were all promoting at the same time and that you don't see often. And it actually had so much more, it was bigger than just the music. Black is King was an excellent catalyst to put in spotlight on just the entire ecosystem of the African industry. Concert promoters now bringing the music from these African nations to nations like Britain and Portugal that once colonized them. 
America has been the chief exporter of global pop for decades, but it's a bit late to be Afrobeat's game. As black people, we've always known that black culture, black people are not a monolith. And this the rise of Afrobeat is really surfacing all the different diverse experiences. Afrobeat's music made its festival debut in the U.S. this past October, after musicians from across the globe came to Sacramento, California for Lost in Rhythm, which drew thousands of music lovers. Thames was one of the performers at the festival. What does the spotlight on African artists mean to you? Africa has never been so lit as it is right now. There's like this bright light coming out of Africa and I'm, I'm just really honored to be African. I'm honored to be Nigerian. I'm honored to be a part of something that is bigger than me. And yeah, it means a lot, not just for me, but for all Africans and for all people of African descent. It's a huge milestone. I think Afrobeats is the new pop. Pop music is popular music. It's music that everyone loves, right? It's like, it's like jello fries. <laughs> jello fries is a Nigerian food that everyone loves. Afrobeats is a genre that is amazing and people deserve to hear it. Afrobeats is, I would say, is my heritage as an African. It's, it's literally part of my blood. <laughs> Faith Abube. ABC News, Washington. Our thanks to Faith for that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.